folks, welcome <laughs> to Marvel Let's Play. I'm Ryan, aka Agent M. And I am Josh Soleil. Wow, you got a lot going on, kid. <laughs> uh, today, we're going to play Marvel Spider-Man exclusively for PlayStation 4. Uh, and, you know, it's going to be fun. We're going to have a good time, do a little, little uh, some swing thwipping. around, some thwipping. But for us to do that, yes. we need some web experts. Some web experts. Some webtastic people. Yes. Let's bring on Marvel Comics editors, Devin Lewis, Lauren Amaro. Come on up here. Give it up for them. Yes, give it up, give it up. Thank you, thank you. Good thank you. Come in. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Have some seats, have some seats. Thank you for being there. It's, Thanks uh, for having us. You guys, you guys have some good history with Spidey and Venom. We do. We work in the Spider office at Marvel, so we work on The Amazing Spider-Man, Spider-Gwen, Ghost Spider, Venom, Cloak and Dagger. We work on the Spider books. Nice. All right, so while we start uh, talking, yes. Josh is going to get to some playing. Uh, we're going to put that up on the screen so everybody here can enjoy Marvel Spider-Man exclusively for PlayStation 4. Yeah, I just heard some woos. I mean, I've been a Spider-Man fan since I was about this tall, and he really is the world's greatest superhero. I mean. When you think about characters in fiction that we all relate to, I don't know that there's one we all relate to more than Spider-Man. It could be anyone under that mask. And it could be anyone zipping around New York in this game. It's, uh, he's just the best, uh, and there's nothing like a great Spider-Man story to really pick you up after a bummer of a day. Heck yeah. Devin, when did you start working on Spider-Man? Uh, I started working on Spider-Man four years ago now, so 2014. Okay, that's been a while. Lauren, how about you? I'm coming up on six months. Yay! Everybody give it up for Lauren. She just joined us this summer. Yeah. Uh, what have you learned from Devin and his, his wisdom in the spider office? Anything? Or oh is he just like hurting every day? Oh, so much. Just every book has its unique challenges, but at the same time, it's so rewarding. And the Spider-Man titles are so great because you end up just not only falling in love with the characters, but just you're so excited to see what happens next. It's very easy to forget that, uh, you know, we're not, that we're fans as well. And being able to play this game, I think it's been really fun because you get to see a lot of the amazing supporting cast that Spider-Man has around him. Uh, not only Spider-Man, but his villains are so compelling. Yeah. One of the things that we talk about at Marvel is every comic book is somebody's first comic book. Uh, every exposure is everybody's first to these characters, to these worlds, uh, and I think that's going to be it's a case with this game as well. Uh, what how, what does that mean for you as stewards of these characters to make sure uh, you know you can introduce Spider-Man or Venom or Cloak and Dagger to new audiences? Well, the most important thing for us is that you know we make stories that everyone can enjoy. That uh, if you walk into a comic book shop and you pick up a comic book that says Spider-Man on it, that you're going to be able to get the best, most compelling Spider-Man adventure that we can possibly muster in those 20 pages. So really just making sure that uh, it's a story we want to tell and that we think the readers need to see is, the, is one of the biggest challenges. Um, and it's also one of the greatest rewards is that, you know, we, Lauren and I work on Venom, which is, uh, you know, it's the character's 30th anniversary and that was an incredible privilege. Uh, you said that every comic is somebody's first, but another thing we say in the Marvel offices a lot is that we stand on the shoulders of giants, and we all take that very seriously. You know, it's a, it's a privilege to be able to, to endure Stan, Jack, Steve, Flo, all of those foundational mighty members of the Marvel Marching Society. Uh, it's, a, it's an honor and a privilege to be able to continue their legacy every day. We're watching um, Josh play yeah. Marvel Spider-Man exclusively mm -hmm. for PlayStation 4. Yeah, use those gadgets, kid. Yeah, yeah. some impact webbing. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. It, what I, one of the things I love about the game is that it has taken so much from everything we know and love about Spider-Man, and there's mm -hmm. gadgets and there's costumes in here from uh, runs of comics that you worked on, right? Yep, mm -hmm. yep. Uh, with the beautiful Spider-Man 2099 costume that was designed by Chris Anka is featured in this game. That's one of my favorite recent redesigns in, in recent Spidey memory. And my personal favorite costume in all of Spidey lore is in this game. It's the, uh, for those of you who have read Amazing Spider-Man 500, it's Spider-Man's last stand suit. It's a, it's a really cool leather jacket with a plain mask and no webs. Oh, it's the coolest look. Uh, and it's just a, a, a treat to see what the developers have done with, so, with all that Spidey mythos. Do you guys have favorite Spider-Man stories? Uh, you know, things that you may have go back to over time to sort of be like, you know, we're working on Spider-Geddon or we're working on something else. And mm, 
I want to I want to think about what they were telling you know back in those days or whatever. Totally. Mm -hmm. Well, it's uh it's funny you mentioned Spider Geddon, which if you guys haven't gone out and gotten it, you got to go pick up the first issue. It's on stands now. And Edge of or Spider Geddon number zero, the very first issue of the series features the Spider-Man in this game. He goes on an adventure with the superior Spider-Man, and it's absolutely incredible. But my favorite Spider-Man story is Spider-Man Coming Home, which is the first volume of J. Michael Straczynski's Spider-Man run. Incredible art by John Romita Jr., and it featured the introduction of Morlin, who, if you guys don't know, is the big bad of Spider-Geddon, and he's one of the biggest foes that Spider-Man's ever taken on. It's a killer story. Lauren, what about for you? Do you have favorite, you know, classic Spider-Man stories or Venom stories or or any other stories of the books that you're working on? I mean, I've been uh, catching up on Lethal Protector, and it's such a good run. It's such a good series. Venom is such a compelling character, um, and it's so fun to watch his early interactions with Peter Parker. Now, Josh is here. He's he's swinging around. Uh, we're going to be doing a race in a little while. Yeah, are. are you just practicing for the race? <laughs> I've been practicing for a week for the race. Oh, oh he brought his A game, Ryan. <laughs> I, don't, I don't know how I feel about that. Uh, Lauren, uh, you know, you, you said you've played a little bit of this game. I know, Devin, you played a lot. But mm -hmm. what, what grabbed you about Marvel Spider-Man exclusively for PlayStation 4? I'm not, uh, I didn't grow up playing PlayStation, so I had to get used to the controls. But even for a new player, it's so easy to get into the game, to learn how to move, how to do stuff. Um, I was talking earlier with you guys down there about uh, the fight moves and how fun they are and how a lot of the things sort of match Peter Parker's personality. That move where he like slides between people's <laughs> legs is such a classic Spidey move. Very smooth, very smooth. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, for me, it's that uh, it's so obvious that the people at Insomniac worked with a love of Spider-Man. You know, executive editor Nick Lowe was involved in the production of this game. Former senior editor Stephen Wacker was involved in the production of this game. Dan Slott, Chris Gage, your favorite Spidey scribes of the last five or ten years were all involved in this game. And it's so obvious that Insomniac took the care and attention to detail. Like. Spoilers, but the Daily Bugle is in this game. You can swing by the actual Daily Bugle as Spider-Man and see where J. Jonah Jameson works. And J. Jonah Jameson is in it too. He's got a crazy podcast. It's just, it's absolutely terrific. And it's really made for Marvel fans. Like Heck it's, yeah. It's Marvel fans, Spider-Man fans. If you like characters with spiders on their chests, this game is for you. Uh, Josh, you almost like swung by the crime in the, the chase. You almost let that go. Spider-Man would never let it go, so I'm glad you went back to stop this. Save the day, Josh. Yeah. Uh, one of the fun things about the game is, like, the world reacts to what you do. There's a social media feed, and when you save people, or when you don't save people, uh, <laughs> they react to it. It's really cool. How yeah. much fun is that for you as just, you know, the two of you as people who are so immersed in the world of Spider-Man to see it come to life in this way? It's amazing, um, and it's been amazing to see the fans sort of react to everything that's going on, uh, hearing people talk about this game, too. Um, one of the things I've loved hearing about it is that uh, people love the main story in this game. It's so compelling, you want to go do it, but also people just spend hours swinging around, checking out the city. Yeah, I, I, I put in a lot of hours on this game. Oh, me too. Checking it out. Me too. Yeah. yeah. The way I've described it is, you know, I've played every Spider-Man game since Spider-Man on N64. Uh, you know, Rise of the Imperfect, Spider-Man 2, Spider-Man Shattered Dimensions, Spider-Man Edge of Time. I've played them all. And this is, far and away, outside of a comic book, the best Spider-Man experience I've ever had. Uh, yeah. it's, it's obvious that, you know, the, the folks at Insomniac did their homework. Uh, not only on Spider-Man, but also on the Marvel Universe, and I don't want to give away too many details for those of you who haven't played it. Uh, but in every way, it's a love letter to Spider-Man and, and Spider-Man fans. Yeah, and one of the fun things about this is watching Spider-Man swing and the way he moves. Uh, and I know, Lauren, you and, and Devin, you're working with Ryan Stegman a lot, uh, artist of Venom. He's been an artist for Spider-Man comics for years, and he contorts Peter into so many different and interesting positions and it, it like seeing those positions that way that Spidey moves come to life it looks it, it blew me away oh. <laughs> that's a genuine reaction of like oh my gosh I love Spider-Man <laughs> who else loves Spider-Man <laughs> heck yeah all right, I guess I'll play a little bit, if you're going to twist my arm. <laughs> Get in there, Agent M. So Ryan's going to go ahead and show us what he's got. 
playing Marvel Spider-Man exclusively on PS4, and now it is my turn. Hello, hello, hello. Hello, Jack. Hello. Thank you so much for being here. Happy Comic-Con. Happy Comic-Con. So we're talking a lot about Marvel Spider-Man. What was your guys' introduction to, I guess, Marvel as a whole? Ooh, that's a great question. Mm. Well, for me, it was the 1994 Spider-Man cartoon. I don't know if anyone watched Spider-Man the Animated Series. Yeah. Woo! Yeah, there yeah, we yeah. go. It's so good. Uh, but I wasn't allowed to watch that on Saturday mornings. My parents thought it was too violent, and everybody had a ray gun, so I wasn't allowed to watch it. But I got up early, and I snuck it, and it was the greatest experience of my life. There's nothing like waking up at 8 o'clock in the morning when you're 10 years old yeah. and watching Spider-Man. Yeah. Uh, and I've been hooked ever since. From there, I got into the books and the games, and, uh, and, and I'm a Marvel zombie. I'm hooked. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. I grew up reading a lot of comics, um, but not a whole lot of Marvel until I got into high school and the all new line brought me back in yeah. to comics specifically because I had dropped off for a bit. But heroes like Kamala Khan, uh, Robbie Reyes, yes, all new Ghost yes. Rider, yes. Um, they're all so good. And then from there, I just started rereading all the stuff and getting back into it. That's awesome. So, so Ryan right now is fighting the inner demons on a rooftop. Look at that combo meeting going to 21. By the way, I got a combo of 143 at Ooh. the fist. Ooh. I'm just saying, Ooh. just saying, 143, that's the, that's the number to beat before we get into the race. I think that's the record. That's the, I think that, that's the record. That is the record right now going Ratified. on. Ratified. Mm. So for those who are interested in possibly working for Marvel, um, what advice would you give them in, uh, in, in, in that journey uh, for a career choice? That's a great question. Um, just keep chasing it. Your love of comics. Um, it's so great to be able to be part of that community. If you're interested in drawing comics, writing comics, find people to make them with, uh, and just keep practicing um, and be proud of the work that you do. Yeah. Well, it depends on uh, you know what uh, capacity these people want to work for Marvel in. If uh, for me, I, I've always wanted to work in editorial, uh, mm -hmm. and I interned at Marvel for five semesters in college. Uh, I got to know the editorial staff, and when a when a position opened up, I was just fortunate enough to be at the graduating college at the right time. Yeah. Um, but for you know for artists, keep submitting to portfolio reviews right here at this booth. If you want to be an artist, we will take your art, we'll evaluate it, and we'll talk you through you know what we think of it. Uh, and your uh, if if you get selected portfolio reviews, you're guaranteed a conversation with a Marvel editor, uh, and that's that's one of the. Uh, the rarest experiences I think a young artist can have. So definitely take advantage of that. Uh, if you want to be a writer, keep writing. I cannot emphasize that <laughs> enough. Uh, you know, we don't take cold pitches. Like if, uh, if you approach a Marvel editor and say, hey, I've got an idea for this story, we legally can't listen to that. But if you've got published work, we can read it. If you've got a screenplay that's been, that's been produced, if you've got a short film that you've made, really anything uh, that's a finished product, even finished comic books, if you submit those to portfolio reviews, uh, will listen. So internships, keep drawing, keep writing, and keep submitting, is, it would be my advice. So while Ryan's going on, do you have any specific area or mission that you want to see Ryan do? Ooh, Ryan, do you want to take a crack at a, a Fisk base? Are there any Fisk, Fisk base nearby? Yeah, let's see. I'd have to go to the map to see exactly where the Fisk base is off. Oh, there's a yeah, backpack down there. Oh, there's a backpack, too. <laughs> I guess you, you could show off the map, too. I feel like a lot of people want to see off the map, too. Crime. Oh, yeah, stop, stop the, the crime. crime. Stop the crime. Be a hero, Ryan. <laughs> be a, be a, he's a hero every day. <laughs> so while he's looking for that uh, Fisk, uh, Fisk hideout, I want to talk about the suits. The suits are tremendous in this game, and Spidey has had a huge line of suits. What has been your favorite suit in the comics? Mm. And then we'll talk about your favorite suit in the game. Ooh. Lauren, do you want to take this one first? It's got to be the classic Venom suit. Yeah. It's so good. Yeah, that one is perfect. Uh, for me, it's the, the Last Stand suit from ASM 500, yeah. designed by John Romita Jr. Uh, it's one of the last suits you can unlock in the game, so I had to be very patient. But just last week, I earned it, and I, I haven't played in anything since. It's the <laughs> best. It's so cool. So I guess you answered both, but what's also your favorite suit in the game? Uh, I haven't played through the game enough to know the different suits, but I've actually seen a lot of fan art of the suits from the fans yes. online on Twitter, um, and it's been so cool to see. I think some of the suits are making their way into the comics. 
Oh well, the the, the game suit is in Spider Geddon. Spider Geddon now, yeah. which is which amazing. Is, yep. mm -hmm. And I'm not sure if you guys saw, but Bill Roseman, one of the the creative di director over at Marvel Games, tweeted a picture from uh, Enter the, the Spider Verse, Spider -verse the movie, yep. and the suit is in one of Peter's chambers in the back. And I thought that was amazingly uh, cool. Mm -hmm. The way they can intricate all of the all of these suits in different ways. It's amazing. Yeah. It's am it's amazing. <laughs> it's truly amazing. And what's really cool too is that the suit the or the game getting to see some of these costumes in three dimensions and rendered by you know real professional artists who render games for a living has been really incredible. Marcos Martin, for example, designed the Spider Armor Mark IV, which is a beautiful black and orange suit. It's very streamlined, it's got a high collar and very narrow eyes. And you know, when it came out in the comics, I thought it was cool, but it didn't strike me until seeing it in the game just how beautiful and elegant it is. And that's one of the things that the game can show you more than I think even the comics can, is how nimble and how lithe and how uh, you know, really quick and fast Spider-Man can be. Yeah. And, and <laughs> hey everyone, I'm a big Spidey fan. Yay! Oh, this is nuts. I'm good, I'm good, man. <laughs> I just thought swing by, you know. Oh my god. He's off to save the day. Yeah, right? So I want to talk about your favorite moment in this game that might have surprised you. Like I know, Lauren, you played the demo. So what in that in that time has really surprised you that took you by surprise? I was just surprised, like walking around. I was sticking to everything, trying to like look into windows. Yeah. I was sticking to cars to see how long I could ride them for. Um, I'm just amazed at how much you can do in this game. How much thought went into it. I feel like there's really nothing you can't do. Yeah. Uh, for me, you know, Nick Lowe, Steve Wacker, uh, and C.B. Sobolski, our editorial staff, they, they were in on the, the jump from this game. They got to see the development, and they had some, uh, some discussions with the writers and about the story. But I wasn't in those meetings, and I, I steered as far as I could from all the trailers, all that business. But when the E3 trailer dropped with the footage at the raft, I was blown away. For, I thought it was going to be a Mr. Negative game. For, for a year and a half, I was like, oh, Mr. Negative is the big bad. That's cool. It's going to be a, a modern Spidey adventure. But then when I saw Electro, when I saw the Vulture, when I saw Rhino, yep. woo <laughs> And I've, uh, I've played a bit of the story, so I know what happens after that. Uh, and it's one of the coolest moments in any Spider-Man story ever. Uh, that is awesome. So I'll let you know, in a few minutes, not a minute, we will be racing. Are you prepared for that? Yes. <laughs> Question mark. Spider-Man represents so much for fans. What does Spider-Man represent for you? Ooh. I mean, Spider-Man's who you want to be when you grow up. Like, he's just such a good guy. He has such a strong sense of who he is and heroism. He's just amazing. Yeah. Mm -hmm. To me, Spider-Man means never giving up. Yeah. Uh, you know, back in Amazing Spider-Man 32, uh, by Stan and Jack, or Stan and Steve, there's that great moment, or I think it might have been John, but there's, a, there's that great moment where Spider-Man picks the heavy machinery up off his back. Yep. Yeah. Uh, and you know, that moment was 50 years ago, but it's still so good and so emotional and so relevant that we see moments that echo it in Spider-Man 2, in Spider-Man Homecoming, and even in this game a little bit. Uh, so that spirit, that enduring talent to, to never quit and to never give in, uh, I think is something that everyone wishes they had, and certainly Spider-Man has in spades. Yeah, absolutely. And here we go, Ryan in the Fisk hideout, doing wonderfully. How does it feel? It feels great. The, like, I've probably played all the hideouts in my own game four times, three or four times, just because they're so much fun. Uh, to replay over and over again. Yeah, you've had some practice. I mean, sure. <laughs> sure, what, practice, what, us? So there's also suit powers in this game. There's tons of suit powers in terms of the web blossom, which we're showing right now, where she goes into the air and, and, sh and, and thwips everyone. There's also um, the, you know, the spider punk one where he plays the guitar and, and a, an a array of, of music goes around that stuns everybody. There's also an EMP one. Are there some suit powers that really, that you clung to that you're like, oh my god, I have to use this? Oh, well, uh, the concussive blasts are really, really cool. So when you unlock the new Spider-Man 2099 suit, his, his costume has these weird jets 
that enable him to fire powerful pa pu pushes of air every time he, he lands a blow on an enemy, and that sends people flying across the map and across each stage. And to me, that's just that's just mayhem. Like you can you can throw people across the stage and web them buildings. You can web them on walls. You can throw them off buildings. You can do pretty much whatever you want with those blasts. And it's uh, it's a ton of fun. It makes them like rag dolls. <laughs> cool. All right, Ryan. You're heading over to Empire State Building, which the race will begin. What the race will consist of is Ryan and myself will go from Empire State Building to Uncle Ben's grave, who can ever do it the fastest, will win clout and awesomeness from all of the fans and myself. I mean, I guess, <laughs> sure. So as he goes ahead and thwips over there, one location that really took me by surprise was the Lockjaw. Yeah. The Lockjaw statue uh, in the southern part of Manhattan. When it comes to locations in Marvel's New York, was there something that you just kept on gravitating towards? Ooh, that's a great question. That's a great question. Uh, I went to the Bugle a lot. Like, the game features a really cool photo mode. I'm not sure if anyone here has yeah. used it, but I'm addicted to it. You know, I'll, uh, anytime I play, I'm pretty much guaranteed to post a few selfies or, or really cool shots of Spidey on, on the PS4 share hashtag. Uh, but just the, the, the Daily Bugle is such an iconic piece of Spider-Man history. And to see it, you know, as it appears in the comics, uh, it's, it's just a real treat. Now, Lauren, during the demo that you got to play, and also, were you able to play with the photo mode at all or see people's photos on social media at all? I've been seeing them on Twitter. I didn't get to do it myself in the game, but again, it's just so crazy. Uh, the shots people are taking and just how people are framing it. I've heard a lot of people, they'll just spend like an hour playing around in photo mode. Yeah. So. Like, I see the photos and I'm like, is that someone cosplaying? No, yeah. oh my god, yeah. it's from the game. What? Oh, what? It's yeah. such and good what's quality. really cool too is that it, it's, it just puts you in Peter Parker's shoes in another way. Yeah. yeah. Like, I mean, back in the day uh, when he was uh, first coming up, he was the photographer for the Daily Bugle. And there are a ton of intricate frames, and you can feature uh, your photos on a Daily Bugle front page in the game. Mm -hmm. So it's just one more way of giving you the most authentic Spider-Man experience that's ever been on a game. Mm -hmm. All right, here we go. The race is about to begin. Are you ready, Ryan? Sure. The timer. Three, two, one. Give it up for Ryan. Here he goes. Empire State Building to Uncle Ben's grave. Come on, Ryan. You got this. And there he goes. Going down, down, down. The so whipping on a building, dizzy. spinning. Yeah. I just turned around. This is intense. <laughs> yeah, the screen is huge. This is like being at Disney. <laughs> we should, we should, uh, who thinks you can do it under two minutes? Woo! Under two? No? Oh, oh under three? Oh! Under three minutes? Throwing shade. <laughs> under, under one minute? Whoa. I think you can do it under two minutes. Under two minutes for sure, under two minutes. Do you, you got this, Ryan. Do you guys have any uh, strategies you would implement maybe to help Ryan out? Ooh, the web zip is really helpful. And uh, I jump at the bottom of my web swings to try and get the most momentum out of the, out of the arc. <laughs> there it is. It's funny, I haven't actually visited Uncle Ben's grave yet. Oh. I've played a lot. It's just, it's a very raw nerve for me. Yeah. Uh, I'm still dealing with the trauma. Um, I'm, I'm very, I'm a method Spider-Man yeah. <laughs> when I play. Uh, I get very sad and very smart. Uh, but so this is, I'm really excited to see. I haven't visited in the game yet. Yeah. I can't wait to see when Ryan gets there. Uh, I'm the type of uh, player in the game where I will do all the side quests first. Me too. I will level up Spider-Man as much as I can. Yep. And then do the missions and just be the ultimate Spider-Man and be like, ha, 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 <laughs> I have all go. the gadgets. You can't stop me. Exactly, exactly. <laughs> I was the same way. And I, uh, well, you mentioned the suit powers before. Yeah. And one of the really cool suit powers that you get is that for every enemy, you have an option to increase your XP. So every time you beat an enemy, you get a little bit more XP than you would usually. And I forgot that I had that turned on for about three days after I fully leveled up Spider-Man. Yeah. So I was playing with a basically a useless slot in my inventory, uh, and I went, a, I went ahead and I changed that. But there's so much leveling. There's, there's such an incredibly rich uh, you know, uh, leveling uh, system and a hierarchy. You know, you've got gadgets you can upgrade. You've got skills you can upgrade. Uh, every part of your Spider-Man experience you can make better or different, and, and that's really a testament to you know, the people at Insomniac, but also the people at Marvel Games. They yeah. just know the, 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 the character and the history and the, and the gear so yeah. well 
uh, it's uh, it's one of the coolest things to get to see as a Spider-Man fan. Yeah. One thing I love to do is switching my suits for each mission. Oh, yeah. So I'm doing a stealth mission. That noir suit is, is going right in. It's so like, good. I, I do the same yeah. thing. I play with the game suit in the day. Ryan, 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 Ryan. Come on, Ryan. That counts, right? That counts. You're, you're in the general waiting. vicinity. We're going to go to the specific one? Oh, this might take a couple minutes then. Oh, and time oh, back. You got to race oh. back, apparently. Oh, I'm doing the race back. What was the time? 2.45. 245. I know you could Woo! do better. I know you could do better, Joshua. All right. You got this, Josh. We're in the vicinity. It's, it's one of these over here. That sounds uh, like exactly what Peter Parker would say. Yeah. He's like, oh, he's she's in here. here. We got to go. We got to go. We got to go. You ready? Three, two, one, go. Ooh. Woo. Do it up, dying. Josh. There he is. Josh, you should be stopping some crimes, though, on your way. I feel like <laughs> every time you don't stop a crime on your way back, you're letting Uncle Ben down. How, how's that? Terrible. <laughs> Terrible. What a cry. Uh, should I just keep talking to you while you're doing this to, to help give you motivation? Yeah, just uh, give me strategies, what you would implement. Oh, wait. You don't, it wouldn't help me. Oh, burn. <laughs> How fast do you think you could do it, Devin? Oh, I don't know. I don't know. I'd, I'd like to think under three minutes, maybe 246. Okay. Just a okay. second shyer than Agent M. Yeah, fair. Mm. Yeah. We've, we've got a, a heckler over here, Langston Belton, one of our, our hosts. is <laughs> he's, uh, he's heckling you, Josh. How you feeling? He had to get me back. He had to get me back. What's our time so far? 55 Ooh, seconds. 55, 55 seconds. Yeah. Didn't you say you could do this in 130? At home with all the power-ups, 130. Oh, so with all the power-ups, oh, you, you had to have it a little bit, <laughs> you know, souped up a little bit further along. Okay, okay. We're feeling pretty good. You got to get to the park. And, you know, while Josh is swinging here, I just want to mention, uh, part of the other reason that I love this game is I don't know if all you guys out there are native New Yorkers. But uh, I mentioned before that I've played pretty much every Spider-Man game that's ever come out. And I don't know that any of them encapsulate the feeling of being in New York City quite like this game. Uh, like, I, I live on the Upper East Side. And one of the coolest parts of playing the game for me, I don't know if you guys saw this on Reddit, but uh, there was, a, there was a, a, an Islamic study center, like a, a, a mosque uptown. And that mosque is in this game. Yeah. So every time when I walk by the, this building in 96th Street and I... Uh, I look to my right and I see this beautiful ornate building. It's in the game as well. I know, I know, I know, I know. No, they're not rooting for you. They're, they're saying we're really upset by you. Minutes. You should probably put the controller 45 down. 45 seconds to get to the top of that Empire What's State our time board? so far? 2.07. 207. Oh. Okay, this is close. So what happened to that 140 or whatever you had? Yeah, with all the power-ups. Oh, I see. So you needed some, some special abilities to, to be so good. Every time Spider-Man levels up, his, he increases his speed, his swing speed, in case nobody knew. This is true. Uh, we're getting real close. We're finishing this up. you got to get to the tippy top. Oh, man. Tippy top. We're getting there. Get in there. It's going to be a close one. What are you doing? Oh! What are you doing? Oh! oh What's our time for Josh? Strategy. Time for Josh. Whoa! He's 241. I had to make it close. <laughs> that was great. Well done, Josh. Very good. Very good. Thank you, Devin. Thank you, Lauren. Uh, everybody, you got to play Marvel's Spider-Man exclusively for PlayStation 4. It is available now. Uh, the DLC, Marvel Spider-Man, The City That Never Sleeps, starts real soon. It's going to be tremendous. It's going to be crazy.